Hello and welcome to AD4 TV Radio Weekly Review, coming to you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital city. I am Antonietta Kalanta. This is a review of the top stories this past week. Within the week, we brought you a report on the appreciation expressed by the Hamam Bachama, Herman Daniel Ismaila Shaga, ruler of the Bachamai Kingdom in Adama State, northeastern Nigeria, for his successful coronation. You will recall that the traditional leader emerged with an overwhelming majority vote of 8 out of 10 kingmakers. The outcome was subsequently approved by Adama State Governor Amadou Fintiri. The new king ascended the throne after the death of Ernest Irmir Stephen, the 28th ruler of the Bachama Kingdom. Pain management, analgesics, pain control or algiatry is a branch of medicine that uses an interdisciplinary approach for easing the suffering of affected persons and improving the quality of life of those living with chronic pain. When individuals are in pain, they usually take painkillers to relieve such pain, but somewhere down the line they become dependent on these drugs. Within the past week, our correspondents reported on this. We play back the package again. Individuals undergo one form of stress or another from time to time. How they deal with such stress could mean the difference between a healthy and an unhealthy lifestyle. One remedy that many people employ to alleviate stress is the use of painkillers through self-medication. Painkillers do more than just the easing stress. They are medicines that reduce or relieve headaches, sore muscles, arthritis or other aches and pains. There are many different painkillers, some more advanced than the others. But one question that seems to elude those who depend on painkillers is the fact that there are always two sides to a coin. So, could there be another side to the dependency on painkillers? Are there any implications? From the little biology I did in secondary school, I understand that when you take drugs, the liver is responsible for detoxifying uh, what comes into the body and when you load the liver with too much drugs you know it has uh, a side effect on the liver and then particularly uh, the regular painkillers we take like Panadol I know that they are quite harmful to the liver if they are taken without recommendation. Frequent use of drug generally has side effects because according to studies um, drugs generally have side effects and that's why certain drugs like ketoconazole, they will warn you at the hospital that only take it if you know that you need it. And it is extremely important. So I don't think anybody should rely on, on painkillers um, like Panadol or even Relief. So it is wrong for me. There are a lot of side effects. Some persons seem to understand their systems and therefore refrain from using painkillers to ease stress. They would rather take a rest, sleep, or engage in physical exercise and this presumably works well for them. Myself as an example, I don't use painkillers simply because I have actually taken time to, as in, to get to know myself and um, whenever I have pains I prefer to rest, sleep or have a little exercise and when I do that, when I sleep, when I'm well rested, the pains tend to disappear. Painkillers can help relieve pain and make people feel happier and more relaxed. However, they can also have harmful effects or implications. In this direction, a reasonable period of rest in between stress points and regularly consulting a doctor or a physician to ascertain one's health status could serve as alternative measures to the dependency on painkillers. Jessica Ochai. 84 TV Radio, Abuja. As COVID-19 cases decline, schools within Nigeria are getting set to reopen nationwide. With pockets of the COVID-19 in some areas, there are concerns for the safety of children. 84 TV Radio crew sampled opinion of some Nigerians on this apprehension. The report. With the easing of the lockdown, social gatherings in markets, shopping plazas and religious houses have returned. While this is considered significant, uncertainty hovers on the efficacy of measures to prevent and mitigate likely challenges that may arise. I don't think the federal government has put the right infrastructure and um, 
um, facility, um, facilities in place for the reopening of schools. So I wouldn't say they are 100% ready. In Strada, I would say 40% ready. Many say since commercial hubs like the markets and other places involving social gatherings have reopened, schools are too crucial to remain locked down. I think schools should have been open before now. If by now we are still thinking about if schools should be open, I think the government are not really uh, concerned about our educational system because the markets are already open, churches and schools, is even, schools actually have few numbers of persons and those people there, they are actually intellectually inclined to know what to do at the right time. But coming down to the market places that have been open for long, we have crowd everywhere going, this one going this way, this one going that way, with little or no control. But in schools, they can, schools can be regulated. So I think schools should be open and it should have been open before now. We are fully ready for the school to be uh, reopened re because now when you look at some sectors, they've already opened, they started doing everything. And I don't see any reason why that you can say school should not open. Because now, if you see this, some markets now, the activities is, is moving. So I think the school should just reopen. But the only thing I would like to say that when school reopened, I think all the students, the parents should also contribute when it comes to fake smart distance and other things like that. So I think school will open, should we open. Uh, from my own opinion, I think it's good. We are ready because the kids have been at home for a while now. So yeah, we are ready. Uh, they have brought out some steps like you make sure they maintain social distancing and also washing their hands always before entering the school premises and as well have their face masks with them. Yeah, I believe that is what government have done to make sure to prevent the spread of the COVID. However, those in support insist on learning from the underlying lessons to develop new ways of teaching and imparting knowledge. Alam Di Aitalibi. AD4 TV Radio, Abuja. We take a break now when we return Breast Cancer Awareness Month in focus. Please stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching AD4 TV Radio Weekly Review. A commodity or service is as good as its brand, and rightly so, because a lot of persons have the preconceived idea that the more prestigious and widely known a brand is, the better its quality and ability to satisfy the targeted taste. Curious about low patronage of indigenous Nigerian brands, AD4 TV Radio spoke to some Nigerians on the subject. The report. In 2016, following Nigeria's economic recession, one mechanism that was quickly adopted to diversify the economy was to look inwards into manufacturing homemade products. These was considered to have the potential of boosting the manufacturing capabilities of the country. But there has always been the problem of getting a lot of Nigerians to patronize homemade products over imported ones. Some persons say that the reason for the low patronage of Nigerian products or indigenous brands is that Nigerians sometimes feel that indigenous brands are of substandard quality. Some feel it's uh, inferior, like the the materials is in producing it is inferior. Because I have a I have a friend, he prefers to even travel to Dubai to get the, his stuffs there. Because but they they have the same thing here, just that they say the quality is different. So I feel maybe it's based on the quality. That's why they don't like patronizing made in Nigeria. It's the quality based on the quality. Some other respondents say low quality is the reason for low patronage of Nigerian products, but that if given time, Nigerian brands will become some of the best in the world. Incidentally, patronage is essential to their improvement. Nigerians sometimes feel made in Nigerian products uh, have less quality. Yes, yeah, so but I just feel if you give it time, made in Nigerian products will be one of the best. It can compete. The thing is, we don't patronize it, so how do they improve? A few persons are to the mindset of class as a reason people don't patronize homemade goods. 
they insist that they patronize Nigerian products themselves. Well, I'll tell you that is mindset, but me, I do patronize Nigerian products. I think it's their mindset, they believe that it's a class thing, that you belong to that Nigerian product. Most of our products, even our wares, are better because you know what you're wearing, not just because it's packaged. I've once, I will not call company, I've once ordered for a, 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 a shoe based on what I saw on net. And when they finally brought it to me, wow, it was not exactly what I was expecting. So I think Nigerian products, we should know how to um, create enlightenment and tell people that our product, and true, there are some magomagos, let me use Nigerian words, that we do present. At times, when you bring our products, it's not exactly to what you expect. So if we can uh, increase, and even the uh, uh, son should engage in our products, Standard Organization of Nigeria should so to make sure and to prove to people that this is what, what they are looking for. For those who patronize indigenous Nigerian brands, creating awareness for them would help solve the problem of low patronage of local brands. Olamide Aitalegbe, AD4 TV Radio, Abuja. Yet in our stable last week was a report on breast cancer. Breast cancer is the most common cancer in women worldwide, both in developed and developing countries. The World Health Organization stated this at the start of the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, marked every October around the world. Given the gravity of this, both public and private organizations came together to create awareness and encourage women to frequently carry out self-breast examination and also seek medical attention for early detection, treatment options, and palliative care. That report again. A few decades ago, very little was known about breast cancer. It was a rarely talked about disease. Today, breast cancer makes it to the news daily. Breast cancer, a disease in which cells in the breast grow out of control, is of different kinds. The kind of breast cancer depends on which cells in the breast form into cancer. The Breast Cancer Awareness Month, marked on countries across the world every October, helps to increase attention and support for the awareness early detection and treatment, as well as care of the disease. Irrespective of this widespread awareness, the information many have about breast cancer is still not sufficient. It's a tumor um, that developed maybe from the breast itself, so and um, um, it expands, expands till it come, becomes untreatable. For now, I don't know. If it's treatable, I am not too aware about it if it's treatable. Breast cancer is a lump, like a disease. Yes, majorly on the breasts. Brings out some um, lumps. The early signs of breast cancer can be a lump in the breast, a painful breast or armpit, or a discharge from the nipples. Sometimes, these symptoms may not present themselves. However, women are advised to frequently visit a doctor for examination. A doctor we most likely perform a manual examination and send the patients for a mammogram. A mammogram is an X-ray examination of the breast used to detect and diagnose breast disease in women. The process is said to be painless and takes about 10 minutes. To win the fight against breast cancer, frequent examination and early detection are critical steps women must take. Mental Health for All was the theme for the World Mental Health Day 2020. Celebrated on the 10th of October each year, World Health Mental Days aimed at increasing the level of people's awareness of mental health. This year's theme shed light on the alarming increase in mental disorders and focused on increased investment in mental health. Here again is AD4 TV Radio's report on the importance of awareness about mental health on all levels. World Mental Health Day is an initiative of the World Federation for Mental Health to increase involvement in matters of mental health, encouraging global mental health education and advocacy against the social stigma that is often associated with it. Following the efforts of the yearly awareness, the level of awareness and sensitivity towards the topic have changed for the better. The language many use when referring to mental health challenges has changed, but a lot still has to be done to ensure the elimination of myths surrounding mental health and mental health challenges. Quite a number of times, and because of the environment that we live in, um, largely because of the perception of mental health, perception of mental illness, and the interpretation of all of this, um, people often think that 
you know, you should wait until somebody is acutely or chronically psychotic, closed off, living on the streets before they see a specialist. But th that's not always it. Um, so sometimes, even when significant life events happen, life events like loss, you know, loss of a loved one, life events like a change in job, life events like a change in relationship. So for instance, a divorce, things that would normally happen to individuals, but of course would impact on their mental health. This year's World Mental Health Day comes at a time when the entire world has experienced changes in their day-to-day -day activities due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which came with many challenges to mental health. When asked what message they would like to pass on in this year's Mental Health Awareness Day, this is what some had to say. You know that it's actually fine to talk to someone. You know, if you are passing through someone, you know, the Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 16, that confess your faults one to another. So if you are having issues, you know, processing things in your brain, or you have, you know, you have low self-esteem, generally you don't feel yourself, it's actually fine to talk to someone. Maybe talk to your pastor, or look for you know a therapist you know i don't think it's really really um popular here in nigeria but outside the country people actually pay for therapy sections you know they actually set out it and go for therapy sections because of they know it's very very important for their mental health i think it's all about like what you take into your system because like basically everything that affects your outtake on life is based on what you take in your system so i think when people start living healthy when they exercise when they eat the proper types of food, then it will also, you know, show on the way they behave in society. It would really, like, improve their behavior mentally and otherwise. That's what it is. Now, more than any other time in recent history, the world is beginning to understand the importance of mental health and just how necessary it is to accord its adequate attention. Remember, coronavirus is real. Ensure you wash your hands regularly. Use alcohol-based hand sanitizers. Wear your mask besides maintaining social distancing. That's it for our weekly review. You can join the conversation on our website at www.ad4tvradio.com. Please follow us on our social media platforms at AD4TV Radio on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at AD4TV Radio as well. Thank you for watching. I am Antonietta Carlunta.